Hello, my name is Mike Martin. I was due to talk on the photo speed uh, stand on Sunday and like everyone else, a um, bit disappointed that the um, show has had to be cancelled but uh, fully understand the circumstances. Um, so instead of talking to people live, here I am in my um, sort of man cave um, or my room where most of I spend most of my time when I'm not out with my camera. Um, you can see behind me there's a few pictures on the walls, there's piles of gear and uh, not far from me by my um, elbows my trusty Epson 3000 printer and a stack of paper from Photospeed. Um, so what was I going to talk to you all about? Um, Primarily there are two things, um, so first of all I'll just spend a few minutes um, introducing myself and giving you a bit of an overview. Um, I'll show you some of my work um, because you don't want to see my face for any longer than you have to and uh, then I was going to talk about how I approached uh, assembling my um, associate panel for the Welsh Photographic Federation. Um, so um, without further ado let's get into a bit of background. Um, I've been taking photos um, for far too many um, years to say, um, suffice to say it was since I was a young lad. Um, more importantly I've been using Photoshop since version 4, um, way back in the 1980s. I always used to shoot on uh, slide film, uh, Fuji Chrome, and uh, had a slide scanner, scanned the pictures, and then manipulated those images on screen um, using Photoshop. So I've been doing creative work and printing my own work for decades now. Um, and I've tried out a variety of um, creative techniques uh, over the years. Um, as for photo speed paper, I've been using their inks and their papers for a probably 10 to 15 years now. Um, previously I had a Epson uh, 2400 printer with a continuous ink system. Now I've got the Epson 3000 with refillable inks um, and I absolutely love the quality of the, uh, prints that I get from that. Um, I started my um, journey into creative portrait photography probably about six years ago and um, when I give lectures to clubs I take them through my journey um, showing how I got started, what my images were like when I first started out and taking them through to uh, where I am now and uh, my current photography. So I'll share you um, a, a few of my pictures with you um, in a few moments so you can see uh, some of those and, and I'll talk a bit about some of the individual images and then I'll go on to the um, uh, the actual panel. So um, my, my approach to um, creating images, um, I like to simplify images um, either in camera at the point of taking or after the event in um, Photoshop. So I'll show you some examples uh, of that in a moment. Um, if simplification doesn't work then uh, I guess my next approach is to make the most of what I've got and, and what I mean by that is um, retouching the pictures, um, basic editing um, you know, to enhance the image and get the most out of the raw files uh, as you go through. Um, if that fails and you still haven't found something um, then I'm not adverse to adding stuff. Um, so you know create my own world, create my own images um, and let my imagination go wild. Um, and the way I see it is when you press the shutter to take a photo um, there usually is a reason that you've done so um, there will be some sort of motivation and that doesn't always come through uh, when you've actually taken the picture when you've clicked the shutter sometimes you actually have to look at the image and you work on it and post-processing as I look at it is about trying to find the image that was there uh, the inspiration that was there and caused you to take it and trying to realize that in a final image so let's look at the first um, image here um, illustrating the sort of principle of simplification um, 
this image it was taken um, in a photo shoot that I'd organized for the photographers with disabilities group that I volunteer for I organize their monthly um, photo sessions um, so I only had about five to ten minutes uh, just to grab a few snaps of my own um, so looking at this picture it's a fairly straightforward um, portrait um, black background one light um, just to uh, light up the subject um, so it's acceptable I, I guess to start with but um, what did I do to it so the first thing was um, I did the basic retouching skin retouching uh, I do use frequency separation or dodge and burn or um, cloning and healing uh, I use all of the tools um, whichever suits the uh, image and gets me to the s sort of standard that I want the quickest um, so I've cropped it in a bit tighter I've retouched the image um, and then I've looked at it and I'm not entirely happy with the amount of contrast um, so the first the next thing I did was to turn it into a black and white and I've increased the mid-range um, contrast there so I've now got a cleaner image um, there's more detail in the jacket um, and I think it's a much improved um, shot um, once I've got that it's then a case of exploring the uh, photo and seeing what it is that uh, it attracts me to that particular image. What are the key strong points? Um, so the next step was actually to explore two different v versions of it. Um, I quite often will rotate pictures. Uh, I'll go in tight um, and mess with them until I'm happy with the composition it doesn't have to be right in camera sometimes you can find something that's a bit extra so the first one of these two um, you can see I've gone even tighter um, to eliminate the top of the head and just make the um, portrait a much stronger and dynamic one on the uh, diagonal um, I did that all in Lightroom um, the second one I had to take it into Photoshop because you can't expand the canvas in Lightroom um, so here I've maintained the tight crop but I've deliberately positioned the subject on the right hand side and I've introduced a lot of negative space on the left I like um, negative space uh, and this is something that I've used in quite a few images and you'll see that in the panel in the second um, section um, but having created that space um, I then look at how can I add something to it that increases the um, um, uh, the impact of the image so here I've used a bit of graffiti um, that I'd photographed previously and I've overlaid that in the background and that imbibes a, a, a certain sort of element of meaning to it um, you know the graphic word alive and the intense stare I think sort of makes quite a captivating image as a final one so here I've got one image that I've worked on, uh, one, one exposure, but I've actually produced what I would consider as four acceptable images um, from that one um, frame. So, you know, it's a case of exploring and seeing what you actually uh, like within that picture. So here's another example of what I call simplification. So. Um, a friend of mine owns um, snakes and reptiles um, and I try to shoot with her as ref regularly as I can. Um, on this occasion um, she was um, keen to sort of be photographed wearing um, this, this top as you can see in the picture. Um, for me it didn't quite work um, and the key element when I looked at the image that I'd taken was the interaction um, and the connection between Ellie and her snake uh, Lumiere the white uh, lutistic rat snake um, and for me it was all about that interaction um, and the um, the dress that she was wearing was a bit of a distraction for me it didn't um, add to that sense of connection that was there so in simple terms I just 
painted it out um, and as simple as that really um, and retained those bits that I thought were important to the final message and to the final image. Um, the same applies with the second one here. Um, this was a portrait um, taken in a, a club studio evening. Um, the side light is from the softbox. Um, I like the light and the shape that it created on the side of the face and on the hair. Um, so rather than uh, missing the opportunity, I dialed up the ISO on my camera and took a picture. Um, and you know, others were taking it in turns using the studio light, so I just used the modeling light as a ambient light source. Um, but in terms of producing the final picture, it was very much a case of looking at the light on the side of the face and on the hair that was what attracted to me it was the shape and the feel of that and it certainly wasn't the red dress and it certainly wasn't the light that was spilling onto the chest area and around there so again just like the uh, previous one it was a case of uh, focusing in on the important elements within the image simplifying it by eliminating the other distractions So I spoke at the beginning about um, the sort of second bit was make the most of what you've got. Um, here we've got uh, an example um, that I took of a couple, it's Ellie again and uh, another chap, Paul, um, and they both shot with one of the snakes. Um, we knew we were going to try to do some Adam and Eve couple type shots there, so I did take the apple with me to the photo shoot. Um, so I've composed this in camera. Um, you can see I've eliminated a couple of the uh, distractions in there, the um, back shoulder and the, and the snake from behind so that we just focus on the key elements. And I've messed with the color to desaturate the image um, while retaining the saturation in the apple. And I think that makes a, for a much stronger image. Um, I did deliberately um, cut off the top of uh, Ellie's head and Paul's head um, because this isn't about them, it's about the interaction and about the snake and the apple and the symbolism within that and you don't need to see their faces to um, portray that uh, symbolization so I call this temptation and it's done quite well for me in um, exhibitions and, and so forth. Um, moving on we've got another one here of uh, a young lady um, and most of my pictures tend to be fairly dark this was trying something different but here you can again see that I've done um, basic retouching to those images um, and in this case I've explored sort of the high key um, and soft sort of approach so I've changed the colors uh, appropriately. I've taken out some of the oranges um, t and left the sort of pinks and the magentas to give uh, a cleaner but crisper image um, which I find quite pleasing. Whether you do or don't is up to you. I don't really care at the end of the day. I take photos for me. The third section I mentioned was about adding stuff um, and here's a few examples. So. Um, here we've got a picture of Shish, um, fantastic model standing in front of some shutters, not really inspiring. What I've done is I've cut her out and I've overlaid her uh, in front of um, some graffiti that I found um, when I was up in London on a photo walk just around the uh, Brick Lane area. So I've built up a library of these bits and pieces. So there's actually three photos here. The two figures in the background are separate pieces of graffiti, obviously by the same artist. And what I've done is I've put the two together and blended those to make one backdrop and then put Shish in front of it. Um, and here I'm looking at the sort of message. I've called this Don't Judge Me. And it's about their, the gaze of the figures behind and her in the foreground. Next um, we've got a guy in a studio session uh, at my camera club um, and it's just a straight portrait really but what I've done is he, he was dressed as a figure from a sort of 
ye olde times. Um, so what I've done is I've found a backdrop. Um, again, it's a stock shot that I've shot previously. Uh, this is a um, castle in South Wales um, and just one of the empty rooms. And I've placed him in front of it um, to produce this sort of image um, that sort of has a, a old feel to it. So I call that yesterday. And it's a, about how to sort of comp um, composite those two images together. Um, doesn't have to be about composites though. Sometimes just a simple texture can enhance an image uh, as in, in the next example where um, I took this photo of Kelly um, just draped in a piece of material. Um, she didn't have hair grips so I gaffer taped it to the back of the head. It's always worth carrying gaffer tape with you. Um, but adding the texture on just elevates that image um, a little bit further. Um, lastly, in the, this small group, um, we've got Shish again, um, working with a, another wonderful uh, makeup artist. Uh, and um, for this shoot, we just said yellow. So I took the yellow flowers along, and the makeup artist did uh, the makeup for me. Um, but when it came to presenting the final image, um, I've sort of chopped off the top of Shish's head, uh, mainly because I couldn't deal with the white afro. Um, but also I wanted to sort of put this brown tone over it um, and it sort of kills the flowers as if they're end of the season, uh, dying uh, and so on. So it harmonises all the colours in that image um, and I call that summer's gone um, because that's what it says to me and I'm sort of with the title leading you in that direction as well so hopefully it's easy to interpret um, and again that one is one that's done very well for me. This next image is um, an interesting one. Um, I had a photo shoot with another photographer who had arranged for a model to come along. The model brought her own outfits and styling and um, she turned up in this totally bonkers headdress. Um, and um, we were shooting at Margam Castle in South Wales um, and the ship doesn't really go with the background or the setting that we are in. Um, I thought, you know, I stared at this for ages and it took me about three years before I worked out really what it, in my own mind, what it was that I needed to do with the image. Um, obviously there's a big sailing ship on her head, um, so really she should be at sea. Um, so what I've done here is I've painstakingly cut her out um, and uh, cleaned up the edges. I've then used uh, about four or five different images of waves in the foreground to sort of have the water breaking over her um, and then another couple of um, pictures in the background with the lighthouse and the clouds and the sky. Um, so there's about eight or nine images all together in there which I've sort of blended together uh, to produce one image and I call that figurehead and I think that's much more in line with the original styling that she had on the day um, and uh, I've found um, the image that was really in my mind at the time. Um, the next one, um, this was taken at a sort of group photo shoot, a number of different photographers and models together and we took it in turns uh, having a go uh, photographing each other. So the styling was done uh, by uh, this young lady and uh, one of her friends who had some of these accessories. Um, and I, uh, when it was my turn to photograph her, I spotted in the corner of the studio uh, this Christmas decoration um, that had got a crack in it. Uh, and that was the inspiration for the image. So I asked her to hold it up and um, in, the, in the manner that she has. Um, and she really had no idea why I wanted her to do that or what I was thinking. But I had this vision, um, you know, because it was cracked and it was um, she was holding it up. This was just as Game of Thrones was kicking off. Um, and I thought, Dragon Queen. So I uh, put together the picture with the dragon and the, that again was stock that came from the Harry Potter experience um, where I took my daughter for her birthday. Um, so I photographed that. Um, and I've 
sort of put the dragon in coming out of the egg so I've now got Dragon Queen and gave her that as a print for Christmas and uh, she was absolutely chuffed. The next example is one um, that uh, is quite interesting. Um, we had two models, a uh, makeup artist had um, sort of white, whited out their skin, it was a sort of high key sort of theme um, and I was looking at how to make something as an interaction between the two um, and um, I suddenly got this idea to get Fern to uh, lay her head on uh, Cornelia's hand and for Cornelia to, to give her a bit of a ticking off um, and um, luckily enough they were compliant and they again they did that for me um, and at the taking point it was very clear that what I was going to do was uh, cut out Fern's body um, because she's behind Cornelia's arm and uh, everything it's quite easy to remove her body and just leave the head a number of people when I show this picture they say well how did you get the head to look realistic uh, on, on top of the hand and, and the simple answer and the trick is it was there um, so it is going to look realistic okay I've added other elements in to complete the image um, so this is face off but um, you know that's how I approach doing it um, so in this section the last one I'm going to sort of talk about is um, city lights um, this is a picture that took me about eight nine years to Put together it's a technique that I'd seen someone um, use um, and apply it differently but I was intrigued by the use of a city skyline as a sort of backdrop as a gradient sort of rotated through 90 degrees and then flipped and rotated the other way so you end up with two city si skylines on the left and right where the uh, sunset sort of meeting in the middle and that as the key element of the uh, the the sort of uh, composite element um, behind a, or, or over a portrait. Um, so what I've done here is I've used a single um, portrait of Shish um, you've seen before. I've turned it monochrome and then I've overlaid those two and I've enlarged the uh, monochrome uh, version so that the shadows on the monochrome um, version are lit by the light areas on the color version and then I've used the skyline as I say as a um, unifying theme to bring the two together and what I was trying to do was create something that had a movie poster sort of feel to it and I think I've delivered that so that's City Lights so um, now, now you've seen some of my um, creative portraits um, I'd like to sort of spend a little bit of time talking about how I came to put together my associate panel um, so where did I start well this was the image that really kicked it off um, it was composed in camera um, as is um, just slightly wider um, just to make sure that I didn't crop off the um, the edge of the um, hand um, at the taking point so but other than that it's it's almost as taken uh, and what I've done here is single strong light to the right hand side uh, side lighting pool um, and then I've obviously increased all the contrast to make this dramatic portrait and it's a very successful portrait for me um, but this was the start of uh, me wanting to pull together a panel now you already saw um, the image um, alive earlier on um, with the model where I had a lot of negative space and a lot of black and I, I thought that that was a theme that was worth pursuing um, so I went through my extensive library of images looking for pictures that lent themselves to uh, significant areas of negative space with strong sort of elements of light within them that you could sort of focus on um, and here's a sort of short list of um, images that I pulled together um, you'll notice that there's a consistency in how I had um, processed all of these um, they're nearly all monochrome or very muted tones um, from a variety of different shoots at different times um, but again 
um, they l lent themselves to m manipulation to m consider for a p panel. Um, here's what they actually started as. So you can see the work that I did in producing the images um, that I was using to sort of shortlist. Um, so having got a, a short list of images, um, I obviously had to turn them all monochrome. It was clear right from the start that it was going to have to be a monochrome panel. So uh, turned those into a monochrome uh, and then started to look at how I could pick together the um, panel. And it was a game of pairs really, looking at which images could or would go together. Um, so. You know, I've paired up some of these ones, as you can see. Um, there's a few that are uh, odd ones out. Um, the one that I started with um, was always going to be a challenge, um, and right from the outset, I knew I'd have to photo uh, photograph a specific image to match that one. So I always knew that I was uh, going to be an image short. Um, but it was seeing how much else I could put together and, and how many more pictures I'd need to take. Um, so there are obvious ones here that are central pictures, um, can only go in the middle of a panel um, if it's symmetrical. Um, so I've marked those C um, and I've paired up others that you can see. Um, when it came to putting it together, um, Obviously I've got the three portraits at the top, they work well as they s stand. Um, when it came to the uh, second and third row, um, I had to flip one of the images, uh, or two of the images actually, the, um, to um, sort of pull together um, a, a pal panel that sort of mirrors each other, uh, and I'm quite happy doing that. Um, and then it was looking to see how it fitted together and some elements didn't quite work um, so I then sort of swapped out um, a couple of images uh, to produce what was going to be the final sort of second and third row obviously still with that gap um, and then it was simply a question of working out how was I going to fill that gap clearly I needed a strong graphic image um, that mirrored or echoed the um, first one that I started from and uh, obviously went out and shot it and here's the final panel um, so you can see all of the images uh, and and how the whole panel hangs together um, when it was going through the assessment it was quite interesting uh, sitting in the audience listening um, and uh, there was some debate as to whether the second row I should swap the left and the right uh, images. Um, they were wrong. Um, it has to be the way I've got it, otherwise it just bleeds out to nothing. Um, and you know, if you want um, to learn more about putting together panels, I know um, that Photospeed have uh, a whole day dedicated to um, selection and, and assessing panels for, um, for awards. Um, it's an excellent day, I went on it last year. Um, but um, this is my final panel and I'm pleased to say that it uh, passed. Um, so I guess I'm hoping that this has sort of inspired those of you who are considering um, producing panels and, and going for it, understand a little bit more about how you could approach it, or certainly how I approached it, and uh, give it a go yourselves so um thank you very much and uh, just to close if you want to see any more of my work um you can find me on um social media um here um or um if you're in a camera club um get them to uh, book me to come along and i'll happily uh, talk um at much greater length with a lot more of my images uh and i'll be chuffed to be able to share uh, some of my enthusiasm for photography with you. So um, 
I think that's it for now. So thank you very much for listening. I uh, hope I haven't bored you too much. And apologies for the quality of the video. I'm not a video person. The uh, last video I took um, was best part of 20 years ago. Um, so it's not something I do. It's not something I'm really comfortable with. So um, I hope um, this hasn't been too painful for you. Till next time. Bye.